In this video, we're going to begin our discussion of the comparison tests, and there will be two different comparison tests that we'll be talking about. Um, the idea of our comparison tests is to um, be able to compare a given infinite series to a series that's known to be convergent or divergent. And we'll typically be doing comparisons to a p-series or to a geometric series. Um, usually the comparison test is really um, helpful if we start with a series that looks kind of like a p-series or kind of like a geometric series, even though it's not exactly one of those types. But through a comparison, we can compare to one of those types um, and then show that our original series series either converges or diverges. So let's get into um, what the first of our comparison test says. Um, and the first one is called the comparison test, or sometimes um, we refer to it as the direct comparison test. Our second comparison test that we'll talk about later will be called the limit comparison test. So our comparison test says the following. Suppose that I have um, two series, the sum of a n and the sum of b n, and that these series both have positive terms. So before we use the comparison test each time, we're going to have to make sure we're dealing with a series that has positive terms. Okay, then what can we say? So the first part of this test says that if the sum of bn converges and an is less than or equal to bn for all n, then the sum of an converges. Okay, so what we're going to be writing down for this comparison test should um, remind you very much of our um, comparison test for improper integrals. Remember we had a comparison test for improper integrals that said if f of x was less than or equal to g of x, we could say something about the integral from 1 to infinity um, of f of x, given some information about the integral from 1 to infinity of g of x in certain cases um, based on whether one of those, those um, integrals converged or diverged. So we have a similar idea here. If I know an is less than or equal to bn um, for all of our, our different terms, and the sum of those bn's converges, then the sum of the smaller things should also converge. Okay, And the second part of this says we also know that if the sum of bn diverges and an is greater than or equal to bn for all n, okay, then the sum of an, well, let's see, an is bigger than bn, the sum of bn diverges, so the sum of an must also diverge. Okay. So next we'll, we'll use this comparison test um, in a few examples. Um, I just also want to point out that um, while we have these two conclusions from the comparison test, if we have a n less than or equal to b n and the sum of b n diverges, we don't know anything. And if we have a n greater than or equal to b n, but the sum of b n converges, we also don't know anything. So we only have a conclusion in these two specific situations. Okay, so let's start looking at how we can actually use this test in an example. So in this example, I'm dealing with the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n over 2n cubed plus 1. So we notice that we do have all positive terms here, which is one of the conditions that we needed for our um, comparison test. And one of the reasons that I look at this and think that the comparison test is going to be useful is that this looks sort of like a p-series, but it's not strictly a p-series. I don't strictly have a sum of 1 over n to the p, but I am dealing with powers of p in the numerator, and um, or powers of n in the numerator, and powers of n in the denominator. So I just sort of note here that this looks similar to maybe the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n over 2n cubed. Okay, Just thinking about what the um, highest power of n is in the numerator divided by the highest power of n in the denominator, um, 
maybe I want to include that coefficient that's in front of the n cubed as well. So it looks like it's kind of similar to this, which is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n squared. Okay, so that's looking much more like an actual p series. Okay, so when we see something that has um, a fraction like this with n to a power over some kind of sum of powers of n, we're going to think about trying to use um, the comparison test. So, what are the steps that we're going to use um, with the comparison test here? Well, the first thing is always going to be to choose that series that we want to compare to. So we're going to choose the comparison series, the sum of bn. And here I'm going to choose my sum of bn to be the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n squared. Okay, Let's think of this original sum here as like my sum of a n. Okay. So what's the next thing that I need to do? The next thing that we need to do is um, determine whether this comparison series converges or diverges. So we need to determine if the sum of bn is convergent or divergent. Okay. Well, we see that we have our sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n squared. I can pull that constant of 1 half out in front. So I have 1 half times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Okay, And we know that this series here is going to converge since just the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared converges by the p-series test. Okay, since we have p equals 2, which is greater than 1, and we know that our p-series, the sum of 1 over n to the p, converges when p is bigger than 1. Okay, so in terms of the work that we needed here, we did need to observe that this series here converged and why it converged, by what test and for what reason here. Okay. So what else do we have to do? Well, the other condition of the comparison test had to do with um, showing that a certain inequality is true. So if I want to be able to conclude that my sum of a n also converges, I need to show that a n is smaller than b n. Okay. So notice that our a n is equal to n over 2n cubed plus 1 and that bn is equal to 1 over 2n squared, or in the unsimplified form, bn is n over 2n cubed. Okay. Um, make sure that uh, notation-wise, you're clear on what we mean by an and bn versus the sum of an and the sum of bn. Uh, it's very important to be talking about the sum of bn converging, but with these inequalities, I'm actually comparing the terms themselves um, and not the, um, the series. Okay, so it's uh, often useful when you're doing this inequality step um, to write down your comparison terms in the unsimplified form because that'll be a little bit easier to do the comparison. I'm just going to write this off to the side so I have a little bit more um, room. So we had a n is equal to n over 2 n cubed plus 1 and our b n is 1 over 2 n squared or unsimplified as n over 2n cubed. Okay, so how do I start doing the comparison between a n and b n? How do I do that inequality work? Um, well, when I have two things like this, this a n and this b n, and I notice they have the same numerators but different denominators, I'm going to start by comparing those denominators. So for n greater than or equal to 1, it's true that 2n cubed plus 1 is bigger than 2n cubed. Okay, This inequality work, again, should remind you of what we did with the um, integrals, the improper integrals with our integral comparison test. Um, we try to build up to the things that we're trying to compare. So I know that 2n cubed plus 1 is greater than 2n cubed. Now, in the um, terms that I want to compare, these are denominators. So if I take the reciprocal of both sides, 
Okay, that flips my inequality sign. Okay, this bigger denominator, 1 divided by this bigger denominator, will be smaller than 1 divided by this um, smaller denominator here. Okay, and now to get this to look like the a n's and b n's that I have, I can multiply um, both sides here by n. So I, now I know that 2n cubed plus 1, excuse me, n over 2n cubed plus 1 is less than n over 2n cubed, which of course simplifies to the 1 over 2n squared. So I have my a n here is less than my b n. Now I know that this said show a n is less than or equal to b n. Um, if we've shown it's, it's less than, that certainly implies it's less than or equal. If you prefer, we can make these all um, less than or equal to in there. Okay. So what do we have to do next? Well, we always have to do a conclusion in all of these series problems. So we can say here, so by 2 and 3, I can just reference the other work that I've done. Meaning, so because the sum of my bn, the sum of 1 over 2n squared converges, and because um, I've now shown that my ans are less than or equal to my bn's, this means that the sum of my ans, my sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n over 2n cubed plus 1, um, converges by the comparison test. Okay, so anytime we're going to do one of these comparison tests, we're going to have all these steps. We're going to choose what to compare it to. We're going to determine whether that comparison series converges or diverges and have supporting work. We're going to have inequality work to compare the terms of our original series and the terms of our comparison series. And then we're going to draw a conclusion. So let's just look at one more example using this um, particular comparison test. Okay, so when we're doing the comparisons um, using inequalities, we'll call that either just the plain comparison test or sometimes you might hear me say the um, direct comparison test. Here I have another example, the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of log k over k. So do we have positive terms here? We want to think about that first before I try to use the comparison test. Um, it was more obvious in the first one that they were all positive because I just had powers of n. Here I have this log k over k. So we just kind of want to think to ourselves, where is log k positive? Okay, well remember our log function looks like this. And the log function is positive for x greater than 1. Okay, so the index here starts at 2, so definitely log 2, log 3, log 4, etc. are all positive. K here is all positive, so we do have all positive terms. Okay, so yes, since log k is greater than 0, for k strictly greater than 1, or for k greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so first thing that we need to do is choose the sum bk. So choose the comparison series. Oops, sum of bk. Okay. So looking at this, we want to th think of ideally comparing this to some sort of p series um, or geometric series. In this case, probably a p series because I do have this k to the first power in the denominator. So I'm going to think about choosing the sum of my bk to be the sum from um, k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over k. Okay, so saying this is log k over, sum of log k over k that I have here. What if I try to compare that to the sum of 1 over k? Okay, so I need to determine the convergence or divergence of the sum here of 1 over k. Okay. Well, we know that the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over k diverges by the p-series test. Okay. Since we have p equals 1, 
which is less than or equal to 1. So we know that um, the sum of 1 over k to the p um, diverges by the p-series test when p is less than or equal to 1. Since this is the equals 1 case, we know that it diverges. Okay, so what can we do next here? Well, now if I'm trying to conclude that my original thing diverges, okay, so I've shown that this similar um, looking series here diverges. If I want to be able to conclude my original thing diverges, I need to show that the terms of that original thing are bigger than the terms of the thing I'm comparing it to. So I need to show that AK is bigger than or equal to BK. Okay. So notice that our AK is log K over K. Those are the terms of the original series. And BK is 1 over K. So I have the same denominators here, different numerators. Before I had uh, same numerators, different denominators, so I started by comparing the denominators. Here, because it's the numerators that are different, I'm going to start by comparing those numerators. So I want to think about how does my log function compare to 1. So I'll draw a little picture to start thinking about this. So for y equals log x and y equals 1, when is the log function here bigger than 1? Well, the log function equals 1 at e, okay? So e is, we know, is about 2.71. So when x is um, bigger than that, or the first integer where log x would be bigger than 1 would be at 3. Okay, so when we get to the inequality stuff, we can say that for k greater than or equal to 3, okay, um, log k is bigger than 1. Okay. Now if I take that inequality here and divide both sides by k, I can say log k divided by k is bigger than 1 over k. So that means that log k over k is also greater than or equal to 1 over k. So we have our ak's are bigger than 1 over k, but it's for k greater than or equal to 3. Okay. So what does um, this tell us? So let's get to our, our conclusion here. Here, I'll just write it out this time. Since log k over k is greater than or equal to 1 over k for k greater than or equal to 3, and the sum from k equals 3 to infinity of 1 over k also diverges. Okay, We can say that the sum from k equals 3 to infinity of log k over k must diverge by the comparison test. Okay. So our sum just starting at 2 then must also diverge. Okay, so we don't worry too much about the starting index piece because we know that convergence or divergence is not affected by that um, difference in, in a couple of terms at the beginning. So just remind ourselves since convergence, divergence is not affected by a finite number of terms. Okay, um, so that gives you an idea of how to use the uh, direct comparison test or plain comparison test um, in both cases where you're trying to show that your series diverges by showing it's bigger than something that diverges and showing that a series converges by showing that it's smaller than a series that converges. So watch the next few video lectures to learn some more about comparison tests in general and the limit comparison test um, in particular.